Good morning. I'm Council Member Ku, Chair of the Subcommittee on Landmarks, Public Siting, and Maritime Uses. We are joined by Council Member Kalos and Council Member Venoso. Today we will be hearing an application for a site selection and acquisition of property and a designation of a landmark. The first item is LU791, an application submitted by New York City Emergency Management, Management and the Department of Citywide Administrative Service pursuant to Section 197-C of New York City Charter for the acquisition of property located at 930 Fusion Avenue, Block 3140, Lot 1 to facilitate the expansion of emergency management's 96,000 square feet equipment storage facility to the full 304,000 square foot available at that site. The facility is used for storing emergency vehicles and supplies, ranging from mobile light towers to generators to pallets of bottled water. It is also maintained as a backup emergency operation center in case the facility at 165 Catman Plaza East becomes unavailable. 87 parking spots intended for the backup EOC will also be provided inside the facility. The site is located in Council Member Venoso's district in Brooklyn. I will now open the public hearing on LU-791. We have uh, Henry Jackson, uh, New York City uh, Emergency Management, and is it Dale? Dale Larson, DCAS, Real Estate Service, and Quay Bonney from uh, Emergency, uh, emergency Management, and James McConnell from e Emergency Management. Uh, please identify yourselves and start, yeah. Is working? Hello. Uh, hi, my name is Henry Jackson. I'm Deputy Commissioner at New York City Emergency Management. I'm Craig Bonney, Director of Sports Services at New York City Emergency Management. Good morning, I'm Dale Lazarson with DCAS Real Estate Services. Uh. Uh, and I'm Jim McConnell, also from New York City Emergency Management. Okay. Ready? Yeah. No. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, good morning, uh, Chairperson Ku and the members of the Committee on Landmarks, uh, Public Siting, and Maritime Uses. My name is Henry Jackson. I'm a Deputy Commissioner uh, at the Office of Emergency Management, um, and I'm here to present, uh, as you uh, mentioned a lease uh, for expansion at 930 Flushing Avenue, which is our warehouse, or as we call it, the Emergency Support Center. Um, as you know, uh, New York City Emergency Management has four primary missions, uh, preparing the city for emergencies, educating and informing the public, coordinating emergency response and recovery, and collecting and disseminating information. Uh, the Emergency Support Center plays a role in all four of these missions. Uh, we got into the warehousing business after 9-11 when we had to take over a pier on the Lower East Side to stage many of the logistical supplies uh, that were needed to respond to that day's tragic events. Uh, we operated at that location until 2006 when, when we relocated off the water's edge to the current location at 930 Flushing. Um, our goal at the Emergency Support Center is to have a supply of anything that might be needed to get through the first few hours of an emergency. Uh, and then we need the vehicles and equipment to move those supplies. So we keep a variety of vehicles as well as our own command vehicles um, that we use when we set up in the field. Um, we have generators and light towers and tractors and trailers and forklifts and other specialty vehicles. Um, and for supplies, we keep uh, uh, cots and blankets, food and water and other supplies to set up sheltering operations. Uh, we keep dust masks, tarps, cones, tools, shovels, sandbags and supplies to set up staging areas in the field and we have a small staff at the warehouse to maintain and deploy those resources. 
Um, in addition, we have a mandate uh, to establish possible alternate seats of government for the mayor's office and other agencies. Uh, so we're, and we're also going to be setting up a backup to the city's emergency response, uh, emergency operations center uh, to use in case of a man-made or natural disaster. Um, the Emergency Support Center also houses the Urban Search and Rescue Team, uh, which is comprised of uh, New York City Police Department and Fire Department uh, members, which has been deployed this year uh, for Hurricanes Harvey, Irma, and Maria. Um, as you likely know, we have used this warehouse for a large donation process right now for Hurricane Maria. Uh, and as of today, we've sent out 130 pallets to Puerto Rico with a lot more coming. Um, we could not have supported such a donation drive without this warehouse. Um, we are looking to expand our footprint uh, at the current warehouse in order to address recommendations uh, from Hurricane Sandy, uh, to have additional warehouse space to surge during emergencies, uh, such as the one we are currently engaged in, uh, and to provide an alternate uh, location for a backup emergency operations center. In order to do this, we worked with DCAS. Uh, and its partners to review several sites around the city to see if we could move our warehouse to these spots. Um, unfortunately, none of the proposed spots were viable, mainly either because they weren't available for the city to buy or lease, or because they were located in one of the city's six hurricane evacuation zones, which is a place we cannot be. Um, the Flushing Avenue location is centrally located, allowing us to get supplies quickly to the five boroughs for catastrophic events, such as Hurricane Sandy, smaller localized events such as the East Harlem or East Village building collapses or localized power outages. So uh, we are here today seeking approval for a long-term lease for this critical facility at 930 Flushing Avenue that will allow us to continue to stand ready to respond for the next couple of decades. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to testify and I'm happy to answer any questions you might have. Thank you. Uh, we are also joined by Council Member Greenfield and Council Member Walsh. No, no, Council Member Mendes, I'm sorry, yeah. And Council Member Levin, yeah. And Council Member Venoso, would you want, like to ask questions or make a statement? Yeah. Uh, thank you, Chair Ku. Um, thank you to OEM and DCAS for being here. Um, I'm extremely excited about this site being in my district, uh, especially after the recent the recent tragedy that happened in Puerto Rico and in Houston and in Florida uh, and in Mexico, knowing that uh, this facility can be in my district and help uh, supply relief to, to many of these uh, either states or countries um, is extremely important to us. Uh, I think it's a perfect site. Um, it's a, out of a flood zone. Uh, it, it, it speaks to the purpose of the building in manufacturing in my district, it's uh, 300,000 square feet is a value. Um, I want to make sure that we work to make this a permanent site for OEM. Uh, so that's my end goal here, knowing that this, this piece uh, that we're pursuing today um, uh, speaks to that possibility in the future is extremely important to me. Uh, what I do want to make sure that I get on record, uh, should there be a need for an expansion of parking on, in, on site in that facility. Um, I would just like to know uh, whether or not that is something that can be accommodated by this building and by DCAS and OEM. Uh, sure, so I understand there are ongoing discussions uh, about parking. Uh, we, we did a design for the building, but there's 300,000 square feet. We just have to you know, modify that to accommodate, uh, again, whatever number is determined. Uh, so you do feel comfortable that uh, if needed, a design modification can happen where we could expand for parking. There's certainly enough space in there to do a, a whole bunch of things, um, and, and parking is certainly one of them. We've already put some parking in there as we testified uh, for the emergency operations center, so it's possible. Uh, how, many, how many vehicles are parked there now, um, or would be parked in, let's say, a, a full built-out design? How many parking spots would be available in this site? 87, right? 87. Okay, so it's and what we what we have currently designed. We have to take whatever the the new need is and then incorporate that into the design. So, so there can be an expansion of that without threatening the the use of the building. Yeah, we just have to move things around and figure out how the workflow goes. Okay, thank you very much. That's uh that's all the questioning I have. Again, very supportive of this site. OEM and DCAS have been over communicative regarding what we need to get done here. Um, ultimately, I would like to see this permanently. Uh, a site for OEM. 
um, and I'm full support. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any members uh, on our committee want to ask questions? Say no? No, thank you. Thank you. Are there members of the public who wish to testify on LU-791? Uh, seeing none, I will now close the public hearing on LU-791. Thank you, Chair. Yeah. And uh, the, next item in, the next item is the proposed designation by Landmark Preservation Commission, pursuant to Section 3020 of the New York City Charter of the New York Public Library. Uh, Stephen A. Schwarzman, Building Interiors, located at 476 Fifth Avenue, Block 1257, Lot 1, in Manhattan as an interior landmark. The designated, the designated interiors include the main uh, reading room, aka Rose, uh, Rose Main Reading Room, and Catalog Room, aka uh, Bill Blast Public Catalog Room, third floor, and the fixtures of the interior components of these spaces. Among the finest public interiors in New York City, the main reading room and the catalog room are the library's principal public spaces and primary destination for most visitors. They are both masterpieces of uh, Bonsard's uh, design with 52 feet uh, tall ceilings and one arch windows. The library is in Council Member Garwanek's district. He has submitted a letter in support of the destination for the record. We are hearing the proposed destination P. Consider. And we have Visitor Honig. New York Public Library, K. Uh, Limox, Mahel from Lemma Commission, and Ali Rosen, Rosen Jill, from Lemma's Commission. So, sorry if I pronounce the names wrong. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, please identify yourself and, and start, yeah. Good morning. Ready, yeah. uh, good, mor good morning, Chairs Ku, Greenfield, and committee members. My name is Kate Lemus McHale, Director of Research at the Landmarks Preservation Commission. I'm joined today by Ali Rasulinajad, our Director of Community and Intergovernmental Affairs. Thank you for the opportunity to testify on the Commission's designation of the main reading room and catalog room in the New York Public Library, Stephen A. Schwartzman Building at 476 Fifth Avenue in Manhattan. Uh, a public hearing for the proposed designation of the main reading room and catalog room was held on July 18, 2017. Seven people testified in support, including representatives of the New York Public Library and several preservation advocates. The commission received a petition supporting designation of the main reading room and several other spaces with approximately 1,950 signatures as well as letters of support from the Preservation League of New York and State Senators Brad Hoyleman and Liz Kruger. Following the public hearing, the Commission voted on August 8, 2017 to designate these spaces as the city's 120th interior landmark. The reading room and catalog room in the New York Public Library Stephen A. Schwartzman Building opened in May 2011. They are the building's principal public research and workspaces, central to the public and civic role of the institution. 
Designed by the prominent architectural firm Carrere in Hastings, the Landmarks Preservation Commission has long recognized the significance of this remarkable Beaux-Arts structure. Designating it an individual landmark in 1967 and its primary circulation spaces, including Astor Hall, the Central Stairs, and McGraw Rotunda as New York City's first interior landmark in 1974. The existing interior landmark is shown in blue on these plans. It includes the main ceremonial route from Fifth Avenue up through the center of the building to the third floor. The catalog room and main reading room, shown in orange, complete this ceremonial route to the primary public spaces within the library. The plan for the building originated with a simple sketch by the library's first director, John Shaw Billing, in 1897. He envisioned a grand building with reading rooms for various collections arranged around its perimeter, and the main reading room located on the third floor above the book stacks, elevated above the city streets. Crair and Hastings won the architectural competition in the same year, realizing Billings' vision for the library with their elegant and rational Beaux-Arts plan. On the third floor, the McGraw Rotunda, which is shown in blue on the map, uh, which and was designated in 1974, and the catalog room and main reading room are all arranged together within a single T-shaped volume at the center of the building between two light ports. This elevated position provides maximum natural light and ease of book circulation. These three grand volumes are enclosed within their own roof line, which rises prominently above the lower street-facing root line to highlight the functional and formal importance of the spaces within. On the Bryant Park facade, the main reading room's large arched windows differentiate its important public function above the narrow windows that illuminate the stacks. Designating the main reading room and catalog room adjacent to the already designated McGraw Rotunda recognizes the importance of these three volumes. The catalog room shown here and main reading room are functionally co connected in the process of searching for, retrieving, and studying books and other materials in the library's collections. The rooms share similar proportions, ornamental features, and materials, including red quarry tie floors, oak millwork, tiered circular chandeliers, monumental arched windows, and molded plaster ceilings. The main reading room is one of the grandest interiors in New York City, rivaling the interiors of Grand Central Terminal. A masterpiece of Beaux-Arts design, it is the destination for most visitors, especially students and scholars. Nearly two blocks in length, it measures 297 feet long by 78 feet wide. At the center of the main reading room is the delivery desk, where readers receive books and other materials. A low structure with arched openings flanked by fluted Doric columns, it creates a screen dividing the reading room in two sections without obscuring views of the remarkable plaster ceiling. 52 feet high, the sumptuously painted ceiling frames sky murals originally painted by the artist James Wall Finn. Both rooms recently underwent a major ceiling restoration project reopening to the public with great fanfare in the fall of 1916. The woodwork throughout both rooms is also particularly fine, especially the desk pedestals, delivery desk, and entrance portals. Significant features within the two spaces include the molded plaster ceilings, arched windows, imitation constone walls, quarry tile and marble floors, and the wood and bronze finishes and fixed furnishings, especially the doors, and surrounds delivery desk, Renaissance style tables and desks, bronze chandeliers, and the bookcase and bronze railed balconies lying the, in the lining the walls. Over the past century, the relatively few changes within these magnificent public spaces have been sensitive to the spirit of their original design. These cherished spaces dedicated to learning and discovery are notable for their architectural, civic, and cultural significance and accordingly, the Landmarks Preservation Commission urges the council to affirm their designation. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Ms. Mahel. And the library is indeed a magnificent and beautiful building. Yeah. Uh, any questions from our members? No? Seeing none? Uh, uh. I, d I would like to just make a statement, uh, sure. Chairman. Um, I just, I, I wanna, uh, 
uh, voice my support um, for this application. Um, this, uh, the Stephen Schwartzman interior main reading room and catalog room uh, are some of the finest um, uh, interior spaces in our entire city and um, uh, provides um, a, a timeless space um, uh, for visitors uh, and uh, both New Yorkers and, and those coming from uh, far and wide. And um, it is certainly a piece of our architectural heritage um, that should be maintained permanently. So I'm in, uh, in uh, steadfast support of this application. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Do you want to, Risa has a statement as well. You want to read it now? Uh, <laughs> uh, please, yeah. Thank you. Mm. Yeah, please identify yourself and then speak. So. I'm Risa Honig, uh, the Vice President for Capital Planning and Construction at the New York Public Library. Um, I guess, good afternoon. Uh, I would like to thank the Land Use Chair, David Greenfield, Subcommittee Chair, Peter Koo, and members of the committee for inviting the library to testify today. The New York Public Library supports the New York City Landmarks Preservation Commission's proposal to landmark the iconic Rose Main Reading Room and adjacent Bill Blass Public Catalog Room. For over a century, the library and its staff have, have acted as proud, caring, and dedicated stewards of these two architectural treasures, and we are now pleased to endorse their designation as New York City interior landmarks. The two rooms, masterpieces of Beaux-Arts design located on the third floor of the historic Stephen A. Schwarzman Building, opened in 1911 as its principal public spaces. These rooms are distinguished by the grandeur of their scale and design, which includes monumental chandeliers and arch windows, richly molded plaster work, carved wood reliefs, and vast ceiling murals. The building itself was designated an individual landmark in 1968. Several interior spaces were also landmarked later, Astor Hall, the Central Stairs, and the third floor McGraw Rotunda. Designating the reading room and public catalog room will rightly complete a sequence of landmark spaces, which were conceived as parts of a single experience. For its part, the library has always treated these rooms with respect and reverence that they deserve. In 1997, with a generous gift from the library trustee, Sandra Priest Rose, the library completely renovated the reading room cleaning the ceilings, refinishing the wood, the wood, removing various partitions, and restoring three ceiling murals. In 2014, after a decorative rosette fell from the over 100-year-old Rose Main Reading Room ceiling, the library did not simply repair, repair that one element, but proactively inspected the ceilings of both the reading room and the public catalog room. While the ceilings were deemed to be in good condition, the library decided to launch a full restoration of the ceilings and the room, reinforcing all the ceilings, plaster elements with steel cables to ensure their integrity for many years to come, refurbishing the chandeliers and restoring a mural in the public catalog room. The library is proud of its work to preserve and protect these two rooms and welcomes landmark designation. Thank you very much. Any questions from our members? No? Thank you. Thank you. Are there members of the public who wish to testify on the landmark designation of the interior of the New York Public Library? Seeing none, I will now close the public hearing on this item. LU791 is being laid over. Council, please call the vote on the vote to approve the landmark designation of the New York Public Library interiors. Ku. I will aye. Mendez. Aye. Levin. Aye. 
Kalos. Uh, with pride, I vote aye. By a vote of four in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and zero abstentions, the item is recommended for approval and referred to the full land use committee. Yeah. Uh, we will uh, hold the vote open for oh, how many minutes? Yeah, for another 10 minutes. And I would like to thank the members of the public, my colleagues, council, and then you staff for attending today's meeting. Thank you.